says, should I put my variety packs, sealable five pack, etc., in my Tupper door or take the cigars out of the pack before? So you get a lot of these now, a lot of companies. And I, and I'm, I'm really grateful for this because I love these packs. It's like five cigars in a humidified bag. And I would say, I haven't really given a great deal of thought to this. I don't, I don't know how much it matters. I would personally probably take the cigars out of the bag and put them in the humidor and then put the bag in the humidor as well and use the bag to carry around when I'm going places. Um, just because I, but I also like to display all my cigars just so, and I organize them by just throwing them in the humidor. And then I always have a good friend like Billy who has OCD. And then I just show him how, how disheveled they are. And then he arranges them for me. So it just kind of works out. But uh, I, I always keep my cigars out of those bags, but that's not something I necessarily recommend doing. I would just say, do it the way that you want to and make sure the cigars stay in the condition you want. I don't think those bags will dry out if they're in a humidor, but if you leave them outside of the humidor, like after a period of time, six months, eight months, if you've opened the bag a few times, it's going to start to dry out. Mm -hmm. So keep it in that humidity controlled space. Yeah, I had an experience with a bag recent, not recently, within the last year. And I got it like it was like a five pack of Kristoff's great cigars. But when I got them out of the bag, they were way too spongy and wet. Yeah. Me being stubborn, I try to I try to light one every couple of days, just trying to make it work. And by the time, like two weeks later, when I got to the fifth one after it sat in my humidor, it was finally at the best condition. So yep. Yep. I would recommend taking them out of the bag and getting them acclimated to how you want them smoked. Because yeah. it, if they're too spongy or too wet, because I know they are over humidified for travel, I would presume. And that could get you into some some moist situations well and again like the big thing with your humidor is that it should be kept at the the humidity you want that little travel bag isn't necessarily it's designed for the cigars to travel to your humidor so keeping them in your humidor will keep them at your humidity versus keeping them in a bag which is kind of like shot in the dark okay billy give me another comment here i saw one that i really want uh justin clevin asked should you split darker wrappers from lighter wrappers when in the humidor no i i put them all together no wrapper segregation <laughs> no wrapper segregation. thank you Terrence. <laughs> i'm all about integrating my wrappers that's what mlk died for <laughs> there you have it i mean i succinctly said no i keep flavors separated from from unflavored premium cigars and that's just about it you could make an argument to keep cigars of different wrapper types sort of separated from each other if you're going to age them over a long period of time you may not want to age a mexican san andreas right next to a connecticut if you're keeping them for more than six months for the purpose of aging but outside of that no i just i arrange them the way i want but i think most people kind of like keep their strong cigars with strong cigars and light cigars with light cigars or morning cigars with morning cigars and evening ones together that seems to make sense to a lot of people. But again, it's really up to you. You just don't want infused stuff in there. And as far as keeping your cigars at your desired humidity, this is a great comment from AG. Thoughts on recharging Bovida packs. Who in here recharges their Bovida packs? Uh -huh. Billy does. Terrence does. 100% John's like, nope. He just throws his over the side of a ship and then they're just like, perfect. <laughs> I just buy new ones because I'm pretentious. There we go. There you go. So I'll say this. As somebody who has an account with Bovida, and the more Bovida I sell, the more Bovida Bovida sells, uh, it is in our best interest to tell you to buy new ones every time. But a lot of people recharge them reliably. Like it seems to work really well for them. Here's the only danger I would say that pops up with recharging the Bovidas. It's basically a salt water solution in there that's some ratio of salt and water. That's how they do the two-way humidification thing. As they dry up, that salt water tends to clump up and crystallize. And so you've got a paper packet and under that is this very thin, like rubbery plasticky membrane. If the like salt water crystals puncture that membrane, it will ruin the cigars if they're touching or really close to the packet. So recharging them can come with that sort of risk. At the same time, there's a few different ways to recharge them. If you can get multiple uses out of them, that's what I would be doing if I didn't own a cigar company where I could use limitless bovidas. So, yes. So, Tim, I just think about the comment before that because it rolled, rattled around in my brain for a minute. When you said you separate your infused cigars from your premium cigars, which I would too if I had any infused cigars. Yeah. But couldn't you just take like a bunch of, I don't know, cheaper cigars like, you know, the less expensive, let's say less expensive cigars 
yeah. and put a couple infused in there and then get like some infused cigars. No, well, I mean, so that's the thing. If you put a premium cigar, let's say something more on the affordable side, and just for the sake of argument, let's say it's a factory smokes. And just so I don't get in trouble with Drew Estate, let's say your infused cigar is an acid. Mm. And you put them right next to each other. That infusion of the acid will come off on the premium cigar, but not to the point where like you're going to pick up your factory smoke and be like, I'm smoking an acid. It's going to taste like a factory smoke with like a little bit of acid essence on it. And so it's not going to be like, <laughs> it's not going to be quite right. Right. Like it's just going to be idea. Yeah. a little it's, bit of acid. Little so little bit of acid. <laughs> You're just going to drop a tiny bit of acid. And, it, and I don't think like, if you really like the infused shit, like that, that's not going to give you what you're after out of an infused cigar. So yeah. no, I would keep them separate and, and like enjoy the premium ones the way they're meant to be enjoyed and enjoy the infused ones the way they're meant to be enjoyed. By the way, I got to say this and not just because I'm picking on Drew Estate, major props to them. Because these counties and cities around the country are outlawing the the sale of flavored cigars, and somehow Drew Estate is getting around this Good by calling them like infused. I even I was talking with a brand owner this week who called his cigars steeped. It's mm. they're not flavored; they're steeped. Mm. Okay, it's like a nice tea. It's like a nice tea. So yeah, we're gonna figure out how to keep infused cigars on the market. There's a great article right now. Or was it? Was it Half Wheel or Cigar Advisor that's talking about this it, this imposed flavor ban they're going to do that is going to kill four billion dollars in cigar sales? Now, I've said before that premium cigars are about a billion dollar a year industry. That's grown considerably in the last few years, but also there's a lot of infused quote unquote cigars that are sold in a gas station, machine made stuff that sort of count into what we do. And so getting rid of that stuff would not only cost a tremendous amount of revenue, tens of thousands of jobs but millions or hundreds of millions of dollars in taxes. So the government's literally going to regulate away something that provides them a lot of tax money. Seems like a sort of self-defeating thing to do. Yeah, and I haven't seen any like uh, grape-flavored uh, premium type cigars. So Tatiana's. You know. yeah. yeah. They're one of the most popular infused cigars that we've really? got. Really? Tatiana missed, Groovy I Blues. Of those. I think I might, might even be out of them right now because they're that popular. They are solid. They are pretty My wife solid. likes them. Yes. When right, it comes to, oh, go for it. Go for it. Terrence. I was going to say, when it comes to like doing cigar experiments, I took a, a half pack of factory smokes and I threw them in a one of my Tupper doors or the, the acrylic jars with a bunch of pipe tobacco in there. Ooh. So I put it all at the, the bottom. So it covers up about like a fourth of the cigar. And then I just kind of sprinkled some more on there and I just left them alone for the last two years. And so every now and again, I'll go grab one. I probably have like three or four left at this point. And they taste like I think it's like maple and rum, so it adds a little bit more fun to the to the factory smokes. Yeah, that's fantastic. 